What does SPF stand for? Which SPF should I even use? What does broad spectrum mean? And are all sunscreens the same? If not, how do each one of them work? And most importantly, which one is best for you? Stay tuned until the end to find out. SPF, otherwise known as sun protection factor, is basically how much solar energy is required to cause a sunburn when you're wearing sunscreen versus not. So in this video, I'm gonna lay out all the steps you need to get to get the best sunscreen possible for your skin. So you definitely wanna stay tuned all the way to the end of the video. The next question comes up, well, which SPF should I even be using? Does it even matter? And the answer is yes, it does. The first thing you should look at when choosing a sunscreen is at minimum, you should at least aim for getting an SPF of 30. This will help protect you from 97% of UVB rays from reaching your skin. Higher SPF just adds a tad more protection than lower ones, but tend to be stickier and they don't last longer either. So you still need to reapply, reapply, and keep reapplying. The second thing you should look for is if it has broad spectrum protection or not. You see, the sun is always exposing you to ultraviolet radiation, primarily UVA rays and UVB rays. The difference? UVA rays go into your skin deeper and cause cellular damage and cancer and premature aging because they have longer wavelengths. UVB rays are shorter and lead to the typical sunburn you get. All sunscreens protect you from UVB, but not all protect you from UVA, which is important to get a broad spectrum one to protect you from both types of rays. So now that we have a sunscreen that has at minimum SPF 30 and is broad spectrum, the third thing you want to look at is the different types of active ingredients in each sunscreen. There are two categories of sunscreens. You got mineral sunscreens and then chemical sunscreens. The mineral sunscreens are those that contain titanium dioxide or zinc oxide or a combo of both. You need one with at least 10% concentrations of zinc oxide if you go this route. Basically, the mineral sunscreens sit on the top of the skin surface and act as a physical blocker. They deflect both UVA and UVB rays, so think of them as tiny mirrors sitting on your skin. The advantage to them is that they block both types of rays, typically work immediately, and they don't clog your pores. The disadvantage is that they leave a white cast behind that looks pretty visible, unless you get ones that are tinted. And since they sit on the skin surface, it's easier to be rubbed off or sweated off or rinsed off. Then you have chemical sunscreens that contain one or more of the following oxybenzone, avobenzone, octosalate, octocrylene, homosalate, or octanoxate. They are absorbed into your skin and sit in the deep layers of your skin in a way to absorb the UV rays coming from the sun and convert their energy into heat, then release that heat from the skin. The advantages to chemical sunscreens is that you don't need a lot of it to work, it's thinner and easier to spread on, and it doesn't really leave visible marks. But the disadvantage is that some still allow UVA exposure, it requires up to 20 minutes to work, and if you have acne, rosacea, hyperpigmentation, it can make those conditions worse. So that's why I personally prefer a mineral sunscreen like zinc oxide, as there's more safety data by the FDA, partly because they don't need to be absorbed through the skin and into the bloodstream. The fourth thing you wanna look for is a sunscreen lotion and not a spray. Although sprays are way more convenient to use, using a sunscreen lotion prevents inhaling your product and uh, getting all that long exposure. And of course, all skin types are different as well. You got dry skin, acne prone skin, oily skin, sensitive skin, even if you wear makeup. I'll leave the best sunscreen recommendations I have for each type of skin in the description below, so definitely check those out. The fifth thing you might come across is sunscreen for your face or your body. The only difference between the two is the size of the bottle that's sold in. You don't need to get a separate bottle for your face. And the last thing I would mention is pick a sunscreen that does not kill the ocean life and damage the coral reefs. Uh, in May 2018, Hawaii banned chemical sunscreen ingredients like oxybenzone and octanoxate, which scientists believe are contributing to bleaching the coral reef and damaging our ecosystems. Even though this law doesn't go into effect till 2021, it's important to recognize that coral reef plants and animals are important sources of new medicines being developed to treat a numerous amount of diseases like cancer, arthritis, infections, and so much more. So if you care for the environment as well and love the oceans like I do, then we'll be going to the beach, ditch those two ingredients. I've been in Hawaii for two months now and have seen a tremendous amount of respect for the oceans and the environment from the locals. And also I've gained a deeper appreciation of the planet as well. So let's recap. 
When choosing a sunscreen, get one with a minimum of SPF 30, one that is broad spectrum, one that is mineral based, either titanium dioxide or zinc oxide, preferably lotion based and not a spray, and one that is reef safe if you are in the ocean. And don't forget to apply and reapply every two hours to more vulnerable areas like your ears, which usually can get burned first. Other things you could do to prevent sun exposure is avoid sun during its peak hours from 10 to 2, seek shade whenever you can, and wear sunglasses with UV protection. In the very end though, the best sunscreen is the one that you're going to use. Sun protection is always better than none, especially during the summer months when the days are longer, the sun is stronger, and it's easier to spend more time outdoors. I hope this video was helpful to some of you. Let me know which sunscreens you use. If you have any more recommendations, leave them all in the comment section below. Especially if you have any questions, I'll try to get back to each and every single one of you guys. If this video did help in any way, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell to be notified of all my other videos just like these. And as always, see you on the next one.